All right. Hello, everybody. Um, students of Mary Lakes, uh, students across the internet. I don't know how many people are watching these videos, but I hope you find it useful. Today's video is about homeostasis and membrane transport, but more specifically, we're going to start by talking about the cell membrane. What definitely one of the most important constituents of every cell. Of course, you don't have a cell if you don't have a membrane to be holding that cell intact, right? So we're going to be talking about that. You see here, to start off, a picture of a cell and with its membrane. But I wanted to point out, look at that, how the cell membrane, if you think of it, when you, when you just put this in the board, you put like this circle picture of a cell membrane. And it makes you think like the cell membrane is like this circular thing. Now, first of all, I want you to remember that a cell is actually a sphere. So it's more like, you know, a, a ball. But having said that, look at the cell. This is not one smooth sphere that is basically one shape. This is a three-dimensional uh, scanning electron microscope uh, picture which will actually show you proteins at the surface of the cell with very pure irrigations, right? These little things up and down the membrane is much more complex than a sphere, solid sphere that holds the cell membrane. And I wanted to get you guys a good idea about that. So I started with this picture here. Now, there are obviously several kinds of cell membranes, and when you talk about boundaries in general, most people think of a cell wall because it sounds like a boundary. But I want to remind you that not everybody has a cell wall. Animals have, don't have cell walls, only plants, fungi, some bacteria. And as you can see the difference here in the picture, you have cell walls surrounding the plant cell, right? But you also have in the plant cell a cell membrane, right? Now, while animal cells will only have the cell membrane, but this is actually a good way, to, two good pictures to show you that the whole prop thing is actually two-dimensional, right? That you don't actually have this two-dimensional thing. I also want to point out, you see these little holes in the cell wall, the connections between the plant cells, we call those plasmodasmata. Uh, that's going to be, that's going to become important later as well. It's how plant cells are be able to communicate with each other in, uh, directly, all right? So, um, Plasma membrane. A plasma membrane is basically made of fat, proteins, and things like that. All right. So you can see here a picture of some of the constitu constituents of the plasma membrane. You got protein channels, which are like your gates of the cell. You got the actual lipid bilayer, which is, as you can see, is two layers of lipids. You got one layer up here and one layer down here, and you have the tails facing each other right there. You know, and then you have the heads facing the outside. That's interesting. Now remember that over here, you will have water, and you also have a water in here. Maybe here you have the 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 the, the extracellular medium or the extracellular matrix (ECM). Over here, you're going to have the cytoplasm or the cytosol, right? But both those things are heavily based on water, so you have water on both sides, which means these parts, the heads, are attracted to water. While the tails are repelled by water, so you've got hydrophobic head, philic heads, and hydrophobic tails, which is actually what, basically, what the water will do is it will push the tails away from it and attract the heads to it, and before you know it, you get an actual layer of membranes. So again, remember when we did water properties, I mentioned that the polarity of water was important to maintain the structure of the cell membrane. So there you go. Surface tension of water will be pushing against the the membrane from both sides, to, which helps maintain the structure of the membrane. But in addition to that, the polarity of water will push away the hydrophobic tails and attract the hydrophobic heads on each of the layers. But it's definitely a bilayer. Also notice that you have these protein here called uh, glycoproteins. We're going to be talking more about them. They are basically the markers for the cell's recognition process. You have channel proteins and transport proteins and all, all the sites of proteins floating in the surface. So I like to think of the cell membrane as like an, a little oily liquid layer, a soap bubble, right, that has these little boats or rafts floating on it. And I want you to think of it, of these proteins, not as, as things which are anchored in the membrane, but are allowed to flow inside the membrane. So it's kind of like a river of fat surrounding the cells and allowing the cells to do uh, to protect them, all right? So, definitely the great weight for the cell. Now, the cell membrane basically serves the purpose to regulate what comes in and out. So, in a way, it provides protection and support for the cell. And as you can see here, 
is a picture of the cell membrane with a lateral microscope which will actually show you the two layers of the cell membrane there so again very good and you can see more of more pictures like this on the web tutorial if you open it up remember this video is just about the structure we're going to do a, a video about the trend uh, things later uh, now in addition to the cell membrane plants algae fungus and some prokaryotes also have cell walls now look here in the for example the the, the, the plant cell will have the cell membrane very thin cell membrane surrounding the cell but in between the cell membranes you see these thick layers of green stuff that's chloro that's uh, cellulose which is secreted by the, the, the this, this the cell the cells and basically it's a carbohydrate a polysaccharide which makes the cell membrane now you see them here too the outside of algae so you have this little box shaped thing thanks to the thing animal cells don't look like that they don't look boxy like that they actually look very free form and more circular while the fungi cells and, and, and plant cells will look like this now remember it is the cell wall that gives the structure of the plant it, the toughness of the plant that even the bark of the tree and the bark of the fungus well it's not called bark of the fungus but what gives the actual structure of these plants and fungus it is the cell membrane so that will basically show you that okay all right so that is our basic structure of the cell membrane on a second so in addition to this the cell wall of plants okay so let's go back to talk about the cell membrane now I love this link which is actually showing you how the cell membrane can change shape it's actually flexible enough to allow the the prokaryotes to propel themselves kind of like swim around because of that flexible so in addition to support and protection and control of what comes in and out the cell membrane also allows the cells to to control um, to create movement by changing the shape of the cell and kind of swimming around think of it as like you know flapping it's very interesting all right um, this is a protist I believe okay because you can actually see internal organelles on it so it's got to be a protist if it was a if there was a prokaryote you would not see any internal membranes inside the cell again as a picture of a lateral microscope it will do, do no justice to optical to, to, to us, uh, microscopes that we have in our classroom now homeostasis is the is the maintaining a stable internal environment or I also call equilibrium if you're going to maintain that you're going to need a boundary to protect you from what you don't want to come in or what you want to put out so basically controlling what leave, enters and leaves the cell the cell can maintain that so again it's a protective barrier it regulates what comes in and out of the cell it, it allows for cell recognition it provides anchors for cells to connect to other cells and for the cytoskeleton with the inside of the cell and I will also add here the anchoring between cells okay uh, or cell to cell communication all right which is kind of inside cell recognition but also the idea of attachment between two cells cell membrane is involved with that and in addition to that another one that's not in here is the allowing the flowing or the motion of the cells so there's definitely a lot of roles for the cell membrane uh, there is the rest sorry I didn't know it was coming out now basically it provides a binding site for enzymes too so cell communication will be involved with this process and also like there you go see the interlocking surfaces between cells and it also obviously the most obvious reason it contains the cytoplasm allowing the cell to maintain its integrity all right so again here's another picture of the cell membrane with its constituent parts I like this one better though this is my favorite it will show you all the parts of the cell membrane so you so you see here you got a, a protein it's called a peripheral protein it's peripheral because it's attached only to one side of the membrane it doesn't go through the entire membrane so it's called peripheral so this one right here is a peripheral protein and as you can see this one is serving as an anchor for the cytoskeleton that's, that's coming through it so there's one role for proteins In, then you have an integral protein that goes to the entire membrane over here this one is probably a cell communication protein because it has a binding site here see it's an enzyme binding site it's got an active site right there that can bind with a ligand or a cell communication device then you have another peripheral protein here and another integral protein here both working together as what we call glycoproteins it's called glycoproteins because you got the protein part which is the green here and then the red part which is the, uh, basically glycogen and then this is a chain of carbohydrates you can see the rings the, the little glucoses all stuck together 
and these serve the protein and the carbohydrates together as little flags to say, hey, I belong in the body. It's a cell recognition uh, role. So you got uh, recognition proteins. Then you have these lipid bilayer. You have the heads and the tails, right? And then you have these collateral molecules, which will give fluidity to the, to the membrane, allow the cell membrane to be more fluid without actually losing its integrity and popping. So you can say that it both holds the structure of the membrane a little tougher and also allows the cell to be more fluid. So if you have more cholesterol, the cell is more likely to remain liquid. All right. So uh, animals that have that really cold environments, they will have more cholesterol in their membranes so that to prevent the cells from freezing. So that's actually very interesting. Uh, it gives more fluid in the cells. Meanwhile, animals that live in really warm environments have less cholesterol because they they, they don't want to be fluid. You know, they want to be as, as solid as possible. Uh, but cholesterol is definitely an important part of the cell membrane as well for those reasons. And remember, cholesterol is secreted by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, while these proteins are secreted by the rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum. And you have the carbohydrates here, which are also secreted by the smooth ER. So yeah, as you can see, all of these things are built inside the cell and then enjoy the membrane. But it's through the Golgi apparatus packaging those things that the membrane things get to where they're supposed to get in, within the membrane. All right, so we're almost done with the protein structure of the membrane. There's a few more things we have to talk about. Now, uh, again, phospholipids is the name of that molecule. We're going to be talking more about it in one second. So here you go. Here we go. Phospholipids. Phospholipids are made of base of two parts. They have two ginormous tails. One of them is a hydrocarbon chain that's saturated. And then you have an unsaturated hydrocarbon chain, which means it does a double bond, see right there, which causes it to bend. So you have a, a saturated and an unsaturated piece, which gives the cell, the, the cell membrane both fluidity and solid. Remember that the saturated one is more likely to be solid, so this one's more likely to be solid, but this one's more likely to be liquid. So it gives a mixture to the cell membrane. Then you have this whole area here is hydrocarbons, so it's nonpolar. And that will be in the inside of the membrane, avoiding water. And then this whole area here is polar, and it'll be on the outside of the membrane. And what you have there is you have a glycerol molecule. Remember the glycerol. Then you have a phosphate group up here, and then you have another head up there, a polar head made of a hydrocarbon connected to an amino group. So as you can see, the cell membrane will, make, will have phosphate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen on it, just like DNA. Okay. Which so that it's hard to differentiate the two of them using uh, using tests uh, uh, of hydroactive tagging tests, but DNA will have a lot more nitrogen. That's for sure. Okay. Um, anyways, remember that the cell membrane is made of two layers of these fatty acids chains, and a polar head in the head. So here you go. You have a phospholayer lipid of two tails and two heads double bonded together. Again, you have the glycoprotein over here, cell recognition, the carbohydrate N, which is a glycogen. You have an integral. This is, would be considered an integral protein because it's going through the whole cell. This would be a peripheral protein because it's not. And here's a go a transport protein, which will allow things to go through this through the membrane. We're going to be talking more about that in the next video. All right. And it's called a fluid mosaic model. Why? Because this whole thing is fluid. It's moving around within the membrane like a liquid, like I said before, in mosaic because it's made of ma many different pieces all put together. So cell membrane is a fluid mosaic thing, all right? We will continue the lecture next time talking about that. Uh, but just last thing to say that the hydrophilic water heads are on the outside and the inside, and, the, and then the middle of the membrane is made of hydrophobic water-fearing tails, okay? This will make the membrane selective for what causes it, and this is the point from which we start the next lecture, which is only for next class. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.